Hello, how's everybody doing this week? This feels kind of close, but I don't have my glasses, so I want to be able to read the live chat. Let me get that going. Also, make sure it's on live chat and not on top chat. All right, that works. And uh, hopefully some people will join in and let me know that we are indeed live and that this is not private because sometimes I've said it wrong. Um, we're in, I am coming to you from South Central Missouri, basically, about an hour from either Springfield or Branson, and I'm in a zone 6B. Uh, what else? Our weather has been hot, so once you pop in, let me know where you're watching from. And um, that's interesting, I got a thumbs up. Oh, there we go, now, now it's showing people. It was like zero people are watching, but you have a thumbs up, so that was weird. Um, so who's here, where are you watching from? Our weather in Southern Missouri has been hot, hot. I think it's finally gonna cool off tomorrow if the weather people are right. And I actually saw that next week one day, the high is only 66, so looks like we're heading in towards fall. We normally have our first frost around October 15th. So, all right, let's see who we've got. We've got Jerry, Third Coast, you must be Gulf Coast, and Tamara is watching, hello, thanks guys. Hi, Diana. And uh, Dahlia is in the house, hello. Um, you're in the 60 there, oh man, I did it. I hate that. I, I do these lives from my phone, and when I try and scroll so the chat will stay up and I can read it, a lot of times I accidentally block people. So if that happens to you guys, I apologize. Um, it's in the 60s up there and you want it to warm up. I bet you do. Yeah. But is it sunny? That's the question. Is it 60s and cloudy or is it sunny? And hello um, from Boldly Grow Homestead. Oh, Chris is here. Hello. Special delivery. We have a boss. So Chris dropped me off here at the live chat and I carried in all my stuff and I was getting set up for it and then realized I said I was doing an unboxing and I didn't have the box with me. <laughs> so I texted Chris and I'm like, uh, when you come back this way, can you please bring back the box? Yeah, it's not sunny very much in Washington actually. Uh, my brother lives there in the Redmond area and his wife is always, um, just like on any sunny day, she's like taking pictures. She's like, I don't care if it's only 50 degrees. The sun is shining. Get outside now. Everybody stop what you're doing. So I'm actually a Pacific Northwest girl myself. I grew up in Oregon and Alaska. And then um, after high school, I went to Louisiana for... Um, <laughs> sorry, one second. Lost my train of thought. I was reading comments. I went to Louisiana for college. And then about five years later... We moved to LA where we spent about 20 years prior to moving to Missouri. So I've been around a lot, but mostly a left coast girl, but I'm happy in Missouri. All right. Uh, oh, Chris from Boldly Grow. We can just pretend I was talking about you. <laughs> I do actually like to get to know everybody's names and now I will remember yours. So uh, I do wanna say that my husband, Chris, who was just in the room, he and I met in college and we uh, attended a Christian college and there was like the boys dorms and the girls dorms made it L, right? And they shared a common lobby and nobody had televisions in our rooms, but there was a television in the lobby and it was in the 80s and we could uh, watch, you know, pretty much whatever. And on um, Sunday nights after church, all the nerds would meet in the lobby and we would watch Star Trek TNG. So I will definitely remember Boldly Grow and Chris because I've got a tie in there where we are definitely Trekkies. We are Trekkies, we also like Star Wars and we also like uh, the Marvel Universe. I'm not a huge DC fan with some of the things they've done. Um, uh, but I did like Wonder Woman and that is a big squirrel. So if you guys have not been here much <laughs> with me, you will notice that I follow shiny things and squirrels a lot in these these little chats we have. And I think we might have some first people, some first timers in the house. And just so that you know, I view these live chats as um, they're much more intimate 
than my um, regular videos are because to me, this is like us sitting down, having a cup of coffee and I like to share uh, not only things about the farm, which I will talk a lot about the farm and what's going on, but I also share things. I, I listen to a lot of uh, professional growth. Um, I started to say podcast, but I don't. I really listen to YouTube channels while I'm driving and I listen to personal growth stuff and I'll share that with you or whatever else is going on in my life. So uh, feel free to grab a cup of coffee, get a sweet tea, get a water, whatever your beverage of choice is and um, interact. And uh, right now we've only got about 10 people here, so it's pretty easy for me to keep up with the comments. But if you guys start chit-chatting a lot back and forth, make sure that um, anything to me is in all caps because that way I can pick it out from the stuff scrolling by and I can know because sometimes I'll talk for a while and then I'll go back and check for comments. Excuse me. And um, and there's been a lot of back and forth talk, then it's, it's easier for me to pick out things that are questions for me or things that you want me to comment on. So that's kind of how we run these things. Uh, so Boldly Grow, where are you located? And Rebecca, Becca, um, you're just going to call me Doug from now on, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why, what the reference is there, but let me know. Um, let's see. Oh, so Dahlia, that's when we're talking about personal growth stuff. That is one of the reasons I was so utterly impressed when you said you had done a TED Talk. And I was like, I must watch this right now because I listen to lots of TED Talks. And actually a TED talk was where I first heard Mel, um, oh no, what's her last name? Mel Robbins, uh, 54321. And then I started following all of her stuff and that really had a big impact on my life. And so when you said TED talk, I was like, oh. So um, I don't know how, um, how many of you actually know somebody that has done a TED talk, but Dahlia from Welcome to Chickenlandia did one. Uh, and there are, now I actually know two people who are my actual friends who have done TED Talks. That's quite impressive. All right, let's see. I'm going to come back and read. Oh, Doug from Up. Yes, of course. And Ainsley, see, I mean, I need glasses. So if I come right here, this is how old, I, how many years old I am right here. Ainsley Grace Junction is Mia. Oh, hey Mia, how are you doing? Um, thank you for letting me know that. April, April's here. And let's see, what else? What else is going on? Um, all right. Okay, so we have a little bit to catch up on. Last week I was talking about processing of the turkeys and that um, I had been unduly stressed by it. It was weighing heavy on me. My turkeys were huge. Um, Liz from uh, the Zora by the farm, she she says mahusive. She calls things mahusive. I don't know, even know, I'm not even sure how she pronounces it, but I just think that like even to me sounds bigger than massive does. And I, uh, the turkeys were that big. That's how big they were. And, and they, the prospect of trying to find time to process them when Chess, Chris when Chris had to go to Oklahoma because of his dad's surgery and um, not being one who um, deals well with blood. So there's a squirrel tangent here. Um, side note is in an emergency situation, I'm okay and I can take care of stuff. Uh, processing chickens and turkeys is not an emergency situation and I don't really enjoy sticking my hands inside their bellies and pulling out the warm guts. That's just kind of, it grosses me out to be honest with you. I like the end product and once that part is done, you know, I can, I can do the washing and the packing and whatever else needs to be done, but that little part I have a hard time with and the killing part, like that's a little bit difficult for me. And so I didn't know when I was gonna be able to get this done and April from Grace Junction Homestead, who is in the house here with her daughter Mia, um, she and 
her daughters volunteered their time to come help me process chickens. And so that was, not chickens, turkeys. That was last Saturday. And Vicki from Little Creek Homestead was going to come with Sammy, but she wasn't able to make it. So it was the four of us, and it was quite a day. Quite a day, quite a day. Poor April, she's taken more than a bow. Um, she was a rock star. Um, so the turkeys, I don't know if I ever told everybody the final weights of them. Um, bye Dahlia, thanks for popping in. Um, the biggest one, like just the meat and bones after the processing was 25 pounds. The smallest one was 17 pounds. I mean, these were some big turkeys, which is why I had to work so hard to get them processed in a timely manner, you know? So it was, it was, uh, that's, that's why. And so she, she basically handled everything. And then I was running back and forth. Um, I had a brilliant idea. My, where the chickens were housed, <laughs> Poor April, she really suffered for me. Where the poor turkeys, I keep saying chickens, turkeys, where the turkeys were housed was about 150 feet from our house. And um, our tap water in our house gets to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And because the turkeys were so big, we didn't have a pot big enough to heat water and to dunk them in. Did I say turkeys? I hope I said turkeys and not chickens that time. So I used a metal trash can that was, it had not been used for trash, it had been used for feed and I had cleaned it out and bleached it out and then that's what we we're gonna use. And so my bright idea was to run a hose from the utility sink in our laundry room down to where the turkeys were housed and fill that with most, mostly with hot water from the sink and then if we needed to add some boiling water to bring it to scalding, that would be great. Um, and it sounds like a really great idea in theory. However, we got it all hooked up and I started the water and went down there and um, turned on the sprayer part of the hose and no water was coming out. So I sent one of the girls up and I was like, check and see if there's kinks in the hose anywhere. So they went all the way up and down the hose, no kinks. I go, well, go in the house and see if maybe the door is pinching it or if it's like bent over the side of the utility sink. She walks in the house. A few seconds later, she walks out, she shuts the door, she goes, um, your sink is broken and your house is flooding. Just kind of like that, like deadpan. And I thought, she's gotta be joking, right? <laughs> Are you joking? No, it's really, the, so then I said, did you turn the water off? And she goes, <laughs> she went running back in the house to turn it off and I just went, oh no, oh no, what is happening? So <laughs> I go, she was so calm about it, not like how I would have been at all. So we go running into the house and and we go out there and I have this like geyser. Well, it was off by then because she had turned it off. This, you know, but that's where the geyser comes in. So this geyser was like spraying up in my house for who knows how long the whole time we were trying to figure it out because the hose had been pulled too heavily on the end of the faucet where you, you pull it on and that whole neck piece fell off in the sink. So it was just coming up out of that hole. And um, because I don't have finished walls in that house, it turned out to be a good and a bad thing. The good thing is it didn't ruin any sheetrock, but the bad news is it was not only spraying into all of the laundry room and the utility room, it was spraying into the kitchen as well. And we had to mop up water for I don't know, it felt like an hour. I don't think it was that long. Probably April can correct me. I tend to talk a little bit in hyperbole. Um, I was I was telling her earlier, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to tell the story of the great geyser of 2019 <laughs> on this live stream. So it was just, it was a mess. So we had to use basically all the spare towels on our dryer. I, it did feel like an hour. I keep a... Um, a stack of like old beach towels and old towels on the dryer that we use for cleaning up spills and stuff. It took all of those. It took a mop. We tried, we were going to use the shop back, but it had a filter bag on it. We couldn't figure out how to get that off. So, I mean, it was just a nightmare. So, and that was just getting started. So then I got the sink, but put back together where it works, but the part that the hose attaches to came off. And so I tried, um, like winding the hose in the sink a couple times, which if I had done in the first place, probably wouldn't have had this problem. 
and, and then attaching it and it just wouldn't work. So then we already had the table, all the butchering equipment, all the buckets and everything down by the turkey house. And so instead of moving everything up closer to the house, we just carried five gallon buckets of boiling water back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until we had enough. So it was, um, it was an experience. Um, April posted a hilarious yet horrible picture. It's like one of those pictures where I just like, I can't look at it, but I can't stop looking at it of herself. Um, on her Facebook and on her Instagram. And April, if you will tell everybody what your, is it under your name or is it under your homestead name on your Instagram so that they can go follow you. Um, she's standing there with the hatchet and it's just like, it looks, she looks like an ax murderer. It's like blood red. Oh, you included that. So she has just posted a video and it has little snippets of the day. Um, and it took us a while probably longer than it would have if I would have known everything. And then my mom shows up with feed for me to unload because she had gone to the feed store for me. And then this, so I spent the day running back and forth between the house and then I started um, vacuum sealing. So I want to talk about that a little bit because the girls were there and April was there when I was starting to vacuum seal. So I rinsed the turkey really good. And, um, and then uh, I put it in vacuum seal and it, which goes really quickly. However, Something that I learned um, is I needed to pat dry the turkey and stuff before I vacuum sealed it. Not because of the moisture constant inside the bag so much, except at the end, the vacuum sealer would be pulling out the moisture and then it would try and seal it and then it wouldn't seal properly. And so I ended up having to go back later and cut them and dump out any liquid that was left and then reseal them. So that's something just to keep in mind if you're using a vacuum sealer. We already had the vacuum sealer and um, bags, but the turkeys were so big, even the smallest turkey wouldn't fit into one of my vacuum seal bags. And those bags were like this big. So we had to parcel them up. And poor April, she dealt with most of everything. She was dealing with the gutting of it. Her girls were such good helpers. I mean, I was, I was basically useless to them because I was too busy going back and forth between stuff. Um, I did do all the cleanup though, and I did send her home with some honey and some pork sausage from our pigs and um, a half a turkey, so, and salmonella, which I didn't know, I didn't realize you could get salmonella from processing, which makes sense, but um, probably nobody else got it, and it's probably because she got basically covered in everything, and then she didn't she neither of us thought about her bringing extra clothes for her to change in and clean up at my house so she went home with all of that on her before she had time to shower and everything and so probably some got on her hands she touched her face or whatever so she's been sick for days and i just feel horrible and she keeps reassuring me that it could happen to anybody and i shouldn't feel bad and it's not my fault but i still feel like it's my fault because they were my turkeys um so if y'all say a little prayer for her i think she's on the mend but that is not fun to deal with at all. So now, now I know I'm not giving any of the turkey away because I want to make sure it's very well cooked. Uh, so I will be making sure that we do that. So that's what's going on in our house. So I was telling her, I was like, I'm going to tell the story of the great geyser of 2019 and the salmonella outbreak. She's like, it's, you can't really call it an outbreak if only one person had it. I'm like, let me be dramatic. Come on, just let me have my moment. I'm ready for my close up. So that's what's going on. So, all right guys, what's going on with everybody else? Who is around still? Sounds like an exhausting day. I bet you all fell into bed that night. I did, I was exhausted. I know she had to be, cause she worked so, so hard. I took a nice hot shower. Um, so on Instagram, you can look at Grace Junction Homestead. You can watch their YouTube video, which is up. Rebecca, uh, Miss B, you want to put up a link to her video in the comments so that people can go find it? Um, let's see. <laughs> Diana says she would name her animals. Makes it it's hard to, would make it hard to butcher them. So yeah, we, we, but we name our animals um, names that usually are food related if we're going to eat them or we don't name them. Like the bunnies, I have not named. Um, I've named the breeders, but not the, not the grow outs. 
Um, our pigs we usually call bacon and sausage or the three little pigs or something, you know, rather not like a, not like Daisy, you know. Um, our uh, turkeys, we called them Butterball was the white one and then Turkey Lurkey and Big Tom. So just kind of generic names. Um, yeah, I thought that would be difficult, but that wasn't the hardest part. It's actually like the touching of the warm stuff. And typically, Chris has agreed to process the rabbits. That's a pretty much a one person job, so I won't have to deal with that. Um, and I will help him once he's got them mostly done. You know, I will, I can get them ready for the freezer. I don't have a problem with that. It's the actual, just like the killing and the getting. Um, hello, Kate. Welcome. Glad you're here. So that's what's going on. Uh, wow, we're 20 minutes in already. All right, so we got a gift. Somebody sent us a package in the mail. Would you guys like me to open it? I'm gonna take a drink of tea while you decide. I'm, I would wanna know, so you probably say yes. Well, I'm gonna open it. I guess I just have to decide if I'm gonna show you or not. Uh, April, I was just telling them that you've been sick and that you don't want me to feel bad, but I still do anyway. All right, Chris wants to see what it is. video about how it was your fault well that good I'll have to watch it maybe I'll feel better after that I was telling them that what we probably should have had for one thing is clothes for you to change into in a hot shower before you left probably riding home with all that stuff on you wasn't very good and um, I don't know what other reasons you said I'll watch the video and find out all right oh <laughs> I should have opened this so you guys could see it before me so these are a couple items from our wish list. Let me see if there's a note in the bag. All right, this is from our friend Willie, who is a viewer. And Willie says, enjoy your gifts. I hope they are useful on the homestead from Willie. Thank you, Willie. Willie watches all my videos, so I'm sure. This one as well. Um, all right. Nice, okay. All right, so, who knows what this is? Do you guys know what this is? Look how long it is, wow. I've never actually seen one of these up close. Who can tell me? Is there a word on it? Oh, right there. Cover it up right there. You can probably tell from the picture. Just, let's see which side is on right there. I'll scroll down, do a nice little B-roll shot for y'all right here. Ding, ding, ding. Compost thermometer, yay. That's so exciting, nice. And I suppose you can also use it as a soil thermometer too, right? It goes as low as, I really should have brought my glasses tonight. It looks like it goes below 40 and as high as 180. So, um, and then it has, it has a yellow, orange, and red for, let's see, red is hot, I can read that, orange is active, I can't read the yellow on white, let me hold it up to the camera, maybe one of you guys can really read the, anybody tell what that yellow one says right there? Do you know? I can't read it, it's too small for me. It's the white on the yellow, it's too light. All right, so that's the first gift. And then there's a second gift in here. And these are, let's open it up. These are for Chris. Baby, these might actually be my size. They say large, maybe they are for Chris. These say original 
the original mechanics wear. So, mechanics gloves. So thank you. Thank you, Willie. So very kind of you. These will come in very, very handy. I appreciate it. That's fun getting the mail. That's nice. All right, so we're about halfway in now. Anything else going on that you guys want to know about? What else should we talk about tonight? Um, I was thinking about something earlier, and now I don't remember what it was. Hmm. I don't know. The fall harvest is done, and that video went up, so you guys can watch that. The Three Sisters Garden collaboration went up last Saturday. Um, and we've been busy, busy, like good busy, not like busy, busy, because last week I talked about how being busy is not a, a, a good thing. Um, but we've been good busy, like productive on the farm, productive. Oh, so Diana's asking about the diet. Thank you for asking. All right, and uh, Kristen Boldly Grow, Boldly Grow says, not much here. Deer are eating what's left in the fall garden. And you said you were up near New York. I think that's what you said earlier. It came by while I was talking. Let's see if I can find it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I don't know, it was way up there. I forget, but Northeast. I'm pretty sure you said you were in the Northeast. Um, yeah, so and you're probably farther into fall than we are for sure. Um, so the diet, it's going pretty good. So I've lost a total of a pound and a half over three weeks. And um, I have learned a couple things. One is I need to get things that are prepackaged in portions and are healthy choices because... I tried like buying um, like the stuff to do salads, like buying lettuce and the, th the toppings that I like in lettuce and, and the toppings I like in salads and then chopping it all up and then having it portioned out, like doing the salad in a jar or doing it into go container containers or whatever to take with me. And what I found out is at the end of the week, I hadn't ever made the time to portion it all up and get it ready and I had salad going bad in the fridge. So that was like not a great idea. Um, and same thing with like I do good if I can grab a string cheese and I have um, a fresh apple and boiled eggs. Things that are, are relatively like done. Um, I boil my own eggs but, but other things that um, if 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 I have if I have to do too much preparation, then it doesn't happen. I also have found out I really need to at least set aside or um, pack my lunch at night, or at least get it like all on the same shelf in the fridge, because in the mornings when I get up and I have to leave early, um, I'll look and I'll be like, oh yeah, a boiled egg and a, a string cheese that'll last me all day. I just need an apple and a few almonds. That's all I need. And I'm like, I, later, I've eaten that by 10 a.m. And by the time I, I'm working till 3 or whatever, then I'm starving to death. And then I want to go hit a fast food or do something. So, Or I'll, you know, I'll stop for gas and I'll go in the convenience store and I'll buy something like a banana or something, you know, healthy and whole food-ish. Uh, but then I'm paying like two bucks for a single piece of fruit, which is ridiculous. So... I, I have decided I'm going to try doing the pre-portion salads um, that have it all in a kit. And I know I'm going to pay more for it, but it it's what I need to do to make it workable for me, at least for now, while there's so much going on on the farm. Because um, I actually made a video yesterday that will be going up Saturday where I, I came in the house at like 4.45 and I worked straight till 6.45 just like trying to do farming things and um and then sat down to dinner with Chris and then basically collapsed because because I just I'm doing things like that you know I get up early and 
and uh, work on the farm and then I go work off farm and then I come back and work on the farm some more and today Chris and I were both home this afternoon for a couple hours and I put him to work and we did a lot of stuff in the house and um so things like that so that's what I've got to do um but overall I have cut back on my soda consumption almost to zero I think I've had one in the three weeks and I've cut down my sweet tea consumption a lot last week I only had one or two and I've been trying to do half and half, half sweet tea and half half um, unsweet tea when I have it. But I'm trying to drink a lot more water and then a lot more healthy choices and cut out the carby things. So I'm just kind of um, moderating. I'm not, I haven't eliminated anything entirely yet. I may get to that point where I do. But, you know, three over three weeks, a pound and a half is basically a half a pound a week. So I think that that is actually, you know, that's pretty doable, that's pretty sustainable. And um, I'll just keep making little incremental changes like that. So, um, yeah. So I like uh, I like the original Superman, like uh, um, I started to say the Clark Kent Superman. No. The, um, Sorry, Christopher Reeves, Superman. I like, um, I don't have a thing against DC, uh, like the comics. It's the what they have done recently with DC. And I actually said, like one of my videos titles recently was Pizza is My Kryptonite. There's actually a series, I think it might be a BBC series called Krypton. Or wait, what's it called? Uh, uh, my husband, Chris, if you're watching... Can you comment and tell me what it is? But it's, we actually, we kind of like it. I wouldn't watch it with kids around. Um, there's, there's some things in it that we forward through, but typically it's, I'm, we're enjoying it. And it's the, the story of, um, of Superman's grandfather. So, you know, they might be really ruining the timeline or whatever, but it's interesting. Um, so that's the diet. So what else is going on? And let's see. Hi, Jenny. Thanks for joining. Yeah, sweet tea is a lot. So off kilter asks, am I doing keto or something else? I'm actually leaning towards a whole 30 diet. So trying to eat, um, uh, really reduce the number of processed foods I have, cutting back on dairy, cutting back on um, bread, things like that. Although I would say for lunch today, I had a bowl of macaroni and cheese because it was left over in the fridge. Um, how about Downton? How do we get over to Downton from here? Yeah, I love Downton. Hey Luke, how are you doing? Are you here yet in Missouri for good? Or are you still going back and forth? Um, And, um, so we are Downton fans and I wouldn't mind watching the movie. I would like to see the movie, but I'll probably see it when it comes out. Uh, my husband, Chris and I are actually huge movie fanatics. We have a large screen pro and projector and we own a, quite a big collection of Blu-rays. We used to have about double the collection we have now, but we had both DVD and Blu-ray. And when we moved from California, we only brought our Blu-rays with us. Um, so here's something interesting about Downton that I've noticed, uh, Rebecca, I've been watching on YouTube, like, because they're promoting the movie, there's been <laughs> a, um, uh, they've been doing like the talk show circuit, you know, and, and chat shows, and they've been doing interviews. And I have noticed that they are keeping the upstairs and downstairs actors separate in the interviews. Like you'll see the upstairs people go on an interview on, on Good Morning America and the downstairs are on like a different interview. I'm like, what is that? What is that? They're all actors on the same show. I just think that's kind of funny. Um, I also like Doctor Who. Um, but we did like Downton. And there was a while where I didn't watch any television. Now, I've always, I have never cut out movies, but there was about five years, a five-year period where I'm like, I'm not getting sucked in into any serial 
a television program because I didn't want to feel like I had to watch a next episode of something that was coming on TV. And so Chris was really sneaky and he would wait until I was in the room and then start a show that he liked that he thought I would like so that I would get hooked on it. So like if I was in the room, that's how he got me into Downton is I would um, get in and watch. I was working on the computer and he would start a Downton and then I would hear something and I would like watch it and I was like, ah, <laughs> so he got me hooked on that. Um, uh, for Doctor Who, I haven't watched in a while since they have the new female doctor. That was the, the last time. And we actually don't have any, um, we don't have any paid TV now. We have Netflix and Amazon Prime is what we usually watch are the two main ones. We also have Hulu, but we don't watch much on it. And Voodoo also. Um, let's see. Luke says the family is all here now. I'll be making a couple trips, a couple more trips back and forth. Awesome. You'll have to let me know, Luke, if you're going to go, if you guys are going to go to the farmer's market in Ava so we can meet in person. Um, let's see. So Amy is probably one, Amy and Rory are probably my favorite, like, time period on Doctor Who. Those are, we're probably losing people. Like, people are like, they don't know what we're talking about. Um, but I just love the Amy and Rory stories, all of them, pretty much. All right. Um, what else is going on? What? You went to like a, vid a Comic Con? That's amazing. Uh, well, Chris, so Chris from Boldly Grow, meet Chris from Plan B Orchard and Farm. That is my husband. And you missed our conversation, my husband, Chris, you missed a conversation earlier where um, I told Boldly Grow about the fact that we used to watch TNG as our date night on Sunday nights at the dorm. So we already talked Trek and you missed it. <laughs> Um, so we've talked a lot about TV shows. We talked about turkey processing. We, Chris, uh, Chris Cruz, did you see the, the present that you were sent from Willie? Pair of gloves. And compost thermometer, soil thermometer. Yay. Luke says, you've been to the farmer's market a couple of times. This week will be at Baker Creek. I usually don't get to go to Baker Creek because they're on Sunday and we're busy with church usually and stuff. Um, I I don't go to the farmer's market every week. So I go, I go now and then. But I do go when people want to meet up. I usually meet them there. That way, you know, I can see if they're creepers or whatever before they get to go to the farm. <laughs> That's like, that's like our safe zone meet place where we go meet people and be like, hmm, don't know how well I know you yet. All right. Um, yes. <laughs> and Walmart. Walmart is where I go to unexpectedly meet people to get recognized in Walmart. Yeah. So Luke, if you and the family are in Walmart, you definitely have to introduce yourselves there. That's where I get recognized more than anywhere else. But I do go there on Sundays, um, after church usually. We also, we have bunnies on the farm right now and they're so super adorable. I thought about bringing one tonight, but I didn't really have a good way of transporting them. <laughs> Kathy, I'm not a creeper, I'm a stalker. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> yes, totally. That's hilarious. I totally am stalking you, Grace Junction Homestead. Yeah, I saw her and I was, the first time I saw you and um, I wasn't quite sure if your name was April, so I said a little quietly to see if you would turn around. And you didn't hear me, but your daughters did. And I was right. And ever since then, the rest is history. And now we share turkey 
turkey butchering. So we're we're friends for life now. Can't beat that. Um. Well, we might wind it down unless I mean we can always talk trek. Anybody have a favorite trek season or series? There's lots of them out there. I like the movies too. I even like the new movies. Although I was a bit thrown uh, by Captain Nero because there was something like oddly um, appealing to me about Captain Nero and I couldn't figure it out until I figured out who the actor was and then I was like, oh yes, because I know him from other shows. Do we want to meet up at the farmer's market this week? Um, we can, I probably could. Um, can you maybe send me a message on Facebook and we'll work it out? Um, Lorella Cruz, C-R-E-W-S. Or you can send it to the farm page plan, be Orchard and Farm, either one. Um, so, all right, yeah. So the original series, Who said, Off Kilter said, the original series can't beat it. The original series can be a bit cheesy, but yes, it definitely said it. Um, I I think I'm kind of liking the way Boldly Grow has them listed, actually. Yeah, I don't know about Picard, though, because the interviews, I don't know if they're just, if they're um, like trying to spread hype, but they're saying it's not the Picard you know. And so I'm like, hmm. I'm not sure what they're doing with him. I don't want him to change too much. He was a, I liked his character a lot. Um, so. I'm like. I just kind of, my brain just stopped right there. I'm just reading your comments. That's not really a good way to host a live chat. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Off Kelter Homestead, what is your first name and where are you watching from? I think I forgot. Is there anybody else who's watching who hasn't checked in yet and let us know where you're watching from? Um, it kind of helps. Well, that is true. Sir Patrick is definitely, um, yeah, I would agree with that. He's definitely gonna um, only only take roles that that he likes. So that makes sense. Oh yes, yeah, so our baby calf. So Chris is bringing up the baby calf. She is so pretty, you guys, and she's so cute and happy and doing well. The bun buns are doing well. And, um, yeah, and we've got some fruit. Uh, I was gifted a bunch of fruit that I've been processing, so I have a video coming out about that. I have a video coming out about the bunnies. Um, Chris and I have a big construction project coming up that we're going to be working on. So there'll be a video coming out about that. I've got the garden planning that I'm going to do. So there's a lot in the works. It's just all kind of right now we've been spending so much time working, not as much time filming because it's just kind of been go, go, go. But uh, there'll be some good stuff coming out soon. I also like to only act in things in which I like the script, so I'm pretty much my own script. All right, well, I think we might just cut this chat a little bit short tonight, and I just want to thank everyone for stopping in and hanging out with me and talking about the great geyser and the great outbreak of 2019, and uh, for talking talking Star Trek and all the other movie shows, that's kind of an interesting turn of topic for tonight. But as I always say, this is just us sitting down having a conversation, right? Um, let's see, so I do have a question. Are your hens laying? Yes, uh, so I have, 
well, let me let me clarify that and say our newer hen, our younger hens are laying really well. So we have silkies, uh, Easter eggers, and silver lace wine dots who are all laying really well. Our Matildas, who are the uh, barred rock, are not laying as well. And they are um, going to go to freezer camp eventually. Um, then my mom stopped at an Amish farm where they had a sign up where they had chickens for sale. She got one year old Rhode Island Reds and um, Americanas and they are laying really well too. So I have plenty of eggs right now um, and I'm happy about that. I'm happy that they're all laying really well. And the ones that came from the Amish farmer are laying nice big eggs. Uh, they're a year old so I have chickens that are about six or seven months old and then chickens that are a year old and then my two-year-old hens that are, they're done, they're done. So they're gonna, they're gonna become food. And um, let's see, it looks like our numbers are actually gone up of people are watching. So is there anybody who's just popped in that has any questions or anything you wanna talk about before we say good night for the evening? I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me every week. It's really fun. I like talking and getting to know you guys more. You need an Americano. Did I say Americano instead of Americana? Do you mean Americana or do you mean a coffee? Americano. Are you talking about the coffee or the chicken? I might have said it wrong. I did that. Like, the whole time I was trying to talk about turkeys, I kept calling them chickens. You have a right. Because I do things to increase my chicken's production in the winter. They don't get the rest that a normal chicken life cycle should have. Um, like, putting in a, a light in there and putting pepper in their food and stuff like that. So, um... That, yeah, you cannot have our Americana rooster. You can't have him. He's so pretty though, isn't he? Isn't he gorgeous? I do have a hilky, a hilky, oh my goodness. I do have a silky hen sitting on eggs right now. If she hatches out an Americana rooster, you can have it. Um, well, we won't know until they hatch out and start crowing. That's, that's how I can tell. That's the only way I know to tell the difference between a rooster and a hen. Unless they're a breed that like their feathers are different. If their coloration is different at hatching, I guess you could know. Other than that, I don't know. All right, well, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you everybody for stopping by and we will see you next week.